Astronomers have found a second incredibly massive black hole in the Milky Way with 100,000 times the mass of the Sun. This discovery is very important for understanding how the universe came together. I can't believe my luck. Just last week, as we were putting up our news video about how smaller black holes combine into more and more massive black holes, leading up to supermassive black holes, astronomers announced one of the most important discoveries in black hole research in the last few years. So, as I sometimes do, I've stopped the explainer video train to report on a very important piece of space news, and actually cover a topic that I've had in my queue for quite a while, the search for intermediate mass black holes. Half news, half explainer. Enjoy. Astronomers from Japan announced last week that they had discovered a black hole with 100,000 times the mass of the Sun, near the center of the Milky Way. Now, this is one of the best observations ever made of a mysterious class of objects known as intermediate mass black holes, thought to be the building blocks of the much larger supermassive black holes that we've come to know and love at the centers of galaxies. The team used two radio telescopes, the Nobuyama 45 meter radio telescope near Nagano and the ASTE telescope in Chile. They observed a giant cloud of gas 15 light years across, located just 200 light years from Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. Gas clouds are common out there in the universe, but what makes this one unusual is how gas is zipping around within the cloud at vastly different speeds. Only something with a massive amount of gravity could hold it together like this. They searched for pulsars and other compact objects that could hold it together, but their calculations indicated that only an object with 100,000 times the mass of the Sun could account for the behavior of the gas in the cloud. Now we know that there are stellar mass black holes. They form when stars with many times the mass of our Sun run out of fuel and die in a supernova explosion, leaving behind a black hole with a few times the mass of the Sun. And we know that there are supermassive black holes with millions or even billions of times the mass of the Sun. When they're actively feeding, they can blast out beams of radiation that outshine their entire galaxy. But the missing link is how these supermassive black holes could have formed. You expect to see mergers across the universe with stellar mass black holes coming together into intermediate mass black holes. These merging together and eventually leading up to supermassive black holes. Although stellar and supermassive black holes have been found, it's this in-between stage that has been elusive so far. In fact, finding an object with 100,000 times the mass of the Sun, this close to the Milky Way's supermassive black hole, is actually twice the luck. If it's this close to the heart of the Milky Way, it could be in the process of merging, building up the mass of Sagittarius A star, which would go from 4.1 million times the mass of the Sun to 4.2 million times the mass of the Sun in the distant future. The news is reporting that this is the first time intermediate black holes have been found. But that's not exactly true. It's just that this is the best direct observation ever made. Have we seen intermediate mass black holes? Yes and no. Astronomers have sure tried to find them directly. Over the last few years, they have done in-depth surveys of globular star clusters in search for them. Now, globular star clusters are huge, containing hundreds of thousands of stars, and they're ancient, forming just after the Big Bang. And this gave them ample time over the course of billions of years for their largest stars to detonate as supernovae, turn into black holes, and those black holes to merge into more and more massive objects. Earlier this year, astronomers announced that there was evidence that there was probably an intermediate mass black hole inside the globular cluster 47 Tucane. The cluster is 12 billion years old, located about 13,000 light years from Earth and contains hundreds of thousands of stars in a region only a few dozen light years in diameter. The cluster itself is star for gas, so they couldn't detect a black hole in the way that this Japanese team did. And they couldn't watch the very center of 47 Tucane to see stars whipping around the center like they do around the center of the Milky Way. There's just too many packed in there. Instead, they track the motions of heavier stars in the cluster. Now they should be sinking down into the middle, but some unknown object is keeping them stirred up. And they also found pulsars, which are further from the center of the cluster than you'd expect. So based on those two 
weak lines of evidence, astronomers estimated that there's a black hole with 2200 times the mass of the sun in there. But this evidence isn't overwhelming. In a second, I'm going to talk about the best evidence that we have for intermediate mass black holes. Conclusive proof that these things are out there. But first, I'd like to thank Rocco Max, Matthew Parker, Sean Marion, and the rest of our 768 patrons for their generous support. If you love what we're doing and you want to get in on the action, head over to patreon.com slash universe today. In fact, the best evidence that we've got that these intermediate mass black holes exist at all is from the recent detections of gravitational waves by the LIGO Observatory over the last year. At this point, the gravitational wave detector has sensed three collisions between intermediate mass black holes. The third and most recent collision, for example, happened when a black hole with 31 times the mass of the sun smashed into another with 19 times the mass of the sun, 3 billion light years away. They combined together into a single black hole with 49 solar masses and converted two solar masses into pure gravitational waves. The two previous events detected by LIGO were similar, with intermediate mass black holes colliding into each other at vast distances away. In fact, with its current configuration, LIGO can only detect intermediate mass black holes. Stellar mass black holes don't produce enough of a gravitational wave ripple to be measurable by LIGO, and the supermassive black holes merge too slowly to cause large gravitational waves either. In other words, if there weren't intermediate mass black holes, LIGO would hear nothing and Einstein's prediction would remain unconfirmed. The discovery of this intermediate mass black hole is huge news on many levels. The black hole contains 100,000 times the mass of the sun, which really fills in our missing piece in our observations. But the technique itself is a breakthrough. By surveying other gas clouds out there, astronomers could turn up even more intermediate mass black holes. This is just the beginning, and I'm sure we'll hear more very soon. Now, there you go, a newly discovered intermediate mass black hole. This thing really needs a name. So what do you think we should call it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and then I'll try to make your name stick with the astronomers, if I can. Now, because of all this news, everything's all switched around. We'll talk about NASA's Deep Space Gateway next episode. As always, I've got a playlist of relevant videos for you, starting with a video from NASA about observations they did about an intermediate mass black hole, then a video from Anton Petrov simulating some mid-range black holes, Space with Sarah talks about how supernovae turn into black holes, and then if you really want to dig in, a longer lecture about why intermediate mass black holes are important and how NASA's new star goes about looking for them. That's ours right now. Our fuchsia game is strong.